Hello and welcome to this episode of Backyard Fitness and Stuff. Today we are reviewing Brightburn. Just when saw it, it's fresh in the mind. Now, I'm gonna start this video with the beginning of it being completely spoiler free, and then I will give you plenty of warning. Doot, doot, doot. And then we'll switch into spoiler, which I love to do. I know, I've actually been running into more people lately that enjoy spoilers than I have in the past, but I'm gonna start off with no spoiler, and then we'll flip the switch. Okay, so Brightburn, which you probably already know, um, it's a take on what another what if Superman scenario, in this case, Superboy, went bad. All right, he has all that power and can do whatever he wants. So, what if the flip coin, the horror side of the coin, Superman decided, nah, I ain't messing with nobody. We're just gonna we're just gonna run this place. It's a it's an interesting concept and probably part of the reason that Batman has always made all those contingency plans. I'd say overall, well shot film. There's a lot of uh, pretty shots in there. Nice colors, dark light. Uh, you know they're in in like Kansas, so you know the fields and things of that nature. Same Superman scenario, Crash Lands, gets adopted. Uh, the the story, same story we've always heard. I would say uh, there's a couple of continuity errors, maybe? But I feel like it's kind of difficult not to have continuity errors with a horror movie, just because you need to have cool horror shots. So it'd be kind of... It's. I feel like it's definitely one of the harder genres because you know they're always like don't go in there don't don't trip over that oh, what are you doing going to look there's always going to be something you're like well you shouldn't have done that so in that respect also i would like to say a, a movie on the big screen that is superheroes from comics um but being like actually filmed like a horror movie i would say one of the closer ones you know we kind of got like blade and stuff like that but not like your your typical like like dc characters but overall i would rank it 7.5 out of 10. it's pretty good and i like the concept having a, a dope concept always boosts a movie up even if some other things may or may not fall short the kid's acting was great very very good i won't say too much about his acting but the, the kid was good the parents you actually felt their connections with the kid so it all felt pretty real all right enough of that i know that was pretty quick but in case you wanted to get my opinion on the movie there it is Spoilers! 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 All right. So, spoilers. This movie is gory. Gory. And as soon as it flips the script on the gore, you're there. So, you, uh... And he's good for a little while. The kid is good. Um, this is probably going to be the recap review part, okay? Because I just love to do that stuff. So, the kid is actually like a good son and stuff until he gets drawn in by the spaceship the spaceship that is in the barn that he's not supposed to know about but he starts he like starts tremoring in the bed and he it's a pretty short movie by the way it's like an hour and a half so hour and 33 minutes so it's not really that long anyway as soon as that part as soon as he got drawn to that ship man from that point on he just got became more and more of a sociopath you could still tell that he kind of cared what the parents thought but at the end of the day he just felt like they were lowered in him that he was supreme you know um so anybody that was gonna you know get in his way or slow him down they got murked you're not gonna tell my parents are you mm, murked like even the girl that he liked in the class at one point they're doing like a trust exercise in pe and she has to help him up and she goes to help him up and he just snaps her hand into pieces. That's the person he liked. So the uh, this is exactly the way it would have happened. Superman deciding that, or Superboy deciding that he wants to just do what he wants. You can't get in his way. What? And we don't even have a a young Batman. I don't think Alfred knows much about superheroes. Either way, we are. So I'll start a little bit from the beginning. Okay. Crash land. They find him. He grows up. They have. Um, they live with him. He gets drawn in to the thing, the spaceship. It's glowing. He's now starting to write sigils and stuff. He's now a sociopath, trying to figure out his past, kind of, and sleepwalking and stuff, and breaking kids' hands. Eventually, he finds his way back in there, finds out that the parents are lying. He gets 
pissed about that, but then pretends not to be pissed. So now he decides I'm gonna go ahead and be my my Cthulhu alter ego, which by the way, I like their use of like the red the red cape still kind of giving an homage to the actual Superman. Whenever he would get out of bed or whatever, he had a red blanket or like whenever he had his Cthulhu shit stuff on, um, he had a red cape, which would flap, still dope. His uncle, he ends up killing his uncle and make he makes all the deaths look like an accident which i'm assuming is so he can work in silence for now until he decides to actually take over because the whole time there's this thing getting repeated in his head and it turns out it's take the world over so he is what i'm assuming goku would have been had he not bumped his head and become really nice and he uh so he kills his uncle he drops he, his uncle had been drinking, so the way he made it look like an accident with that is he picks the car up, drops it, his jaw is hanging. His jaw is hanging, so he kind of holds it up there or whatever. At, at every crime scene, though, this just shows you how little effort he was willing to put in because he doesn't feel the need to. At the end of the day, even if he got caught doing whatever he's doing, he still feels better than everybody, so he can still take everybody out, but he always would put the two Bs because his name's Brandon Breyer. So... He would go line B, line B, whether that's in the blood of the uncle that he killed by dropping the car, jaw hanging, or the girl he liked killed her mom. She worked at a restaurant. That's what you saw in the trailer uh, whenever like the uh, lights were flickering and a piece of glass went in the eye and she had to pull it out. And then he chased her into the uh, freezer, murked her, just flew into her, bro broke her into pieces, ended up taking her back to the barn. We don't find out until the very end, but she's down there with like her chest open and stuff. He's got a fascination with organs, as most serial killers do. His dad eventually sees what kind of being he is and that this ain't gonna work. So he says, I'm gonna take him hunting. They go into the woods, he tries to shoot him in the back of the head. That's a mistake. He gets chased down, laser beamed through his skull. It looks like something straight out of Mortal Kombat. It makes its way through the back of the head. By that point, the mom has been defending, 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 defending him at every turn because she's always wanted a kid. Her and her husband have never been able to have a kid, so she said the whole time she says she'd been looking at this whole thing like a blessing. So she's calling, and then as soon as Kyle, her husband, picks up, Kyle, you were right. He killed blah blah. He did this. Hello, mom. Where are you, Brandon? I'm home, mom. Puts the phone down, crushes it. Now he's just flying through the house, messing shit up. She's trying to call nine one one. The cops show up. What do you think is going to happen there? He just flies into the cop, turns him into mincemeat. Like, literally, gory. I'm talking about when I say this, I'm not just telling you what, like, I thought it would look like. No, you got to see pieces of him everywhere. Then, uh, the other cop, the female cop that was with him, is running around. You know, she gets slammed through some glass, just bleeding all over the place. She's trying to hide under the bed the whole time. Her son and her used to have a game where they'd whistle and find each other because because of course they did and he's whistling looking for her. she's under the bed one thing she does realize is one time he was sleepwalking right he went out to the spaceship trying to go in there and he was floating above it and he fell he's never been cut or bled his entire life but he got cut on the spaceship so she finds she figures out Okay, I need to make it to that spaceship. So she decides to go to the spaceship. She goes in there. She grabs a piece of it, you know, takes a piece off, is gonna, puts it in her back pocket. Now she's looking for him. They find each other. And she's like, you're always going to be my little boy. I know there's good in you. And he's like, I want to do good, Mom. Whenever she pulls off his Cthulhu thing, they hug. She about to stab him. Nope. Come on, now it's Superman. Superboy. Grabs it. Looks at her. Flies her way up into the air. It's nice slow-mo cinematic looking drops her out of the sky <whistles> Bye ma now he's sitting up there. All right everyone. He just killed down in that building, right? You're like, how could he possibly make this look like an accident looks to his left? There's a plane he makes it look like the plane crashed into the barn and the house and everything and murked everybody now he's sitting on the back of the ambulance talking about um, hmm, what a wonderful cookie we have here. <laughs> and they, you hear reports of like the people that died and stuff and how um, 
her and her husband are survived by Brandon or whatever. Man. So, all that happens. Now, that ends, and now we get re we see the reports of him actually tearing stuff up in broad daylight on camera. No longer trying to hide anything. And now, there is... I'll have to look up and see if it's who I think it is, but there's a news person or whatever that really looks like, um... What's his name that plays Yandu? I could be wrong, but... He was, he's just, like, do, playing the part of, like, the the crazy news reporter in a way. They're going to be eating our lunch if we don't do something. So, apparently, all, there is no superheroes in whatever universe this may or may not be starting. I guess, depending on how good it can, like, it will do. But, um, they allude to an underwater person, you know, and a witch that chokes people with ropes and stuff essentially building an evil justice league so all in all with that being said and to be honest I, I i'm proud of myself i gave less spoilers and more of a review about it than i thought i did i would because usually i do i could spend if it's an hour and a half i might spend 30 minutes to 45 minutes giving you a complete recap of the movie so not too shabby bright burn 7.5 out of 10 pretty good concept good i just a few continuity errors i think um don't definitely worth seeing i think you should go see it i felt like it was it was done well and possibly the story could be made better if they continue it with other films so there there is that so my review of bright burn evil horror gory superman is good man go see it until next time backyard fitness and stuff it's a bird! It's a plane! No, it's a murderous killing machine. <laughs>